Hello and welcome to the third part of our tutorial series on creating breathtaking skies using volumetric clouds in Unity. In this tutorial you will learn how to render sun shafts with your volumetric clouds. You will learn how to set up volumetric fog to render sun shafts. By the end of this tutorial you will have gained the knowledge to use fog in combination with your volumetric clouds to add depth and realism to your skies. Please be aware that this guide builds on foundational concepts discussed in parts 1 and 2 of the Volumetric Clouds Mastery series. And again, we are very happy to tell you that this video is sponsored by Unity. Creating great looking sun shafts in your skies depends on the style of your clouds, fog settings and light settings. In this tutorial we will introduce you to volumetric fog and provide you with baseline settings that you can use as a starting point for creating great looking sun shafts in your skies. Let's start by creating a new scene. Go to File and select New Scene. Select Basic Outdoor HDRP, then select Create. Give the scene name of your choice. I will call mine Volumetric Clouds underscore Sun Shafts. Then save to open the scene. Again, in a new scene, we want to ensure that our scene effects is set to Always Refresh and check that the camera's clipping plane is set to 100,000 or more. And anti-aliasing is set to temporal anti-aliasing. Select the main camera and set the camera's far clipping plane to 50,000. If the camera's far clipping plane is too low, we will not see sun shafts rendered in the distance. The first step is to add some custom volumetric clouds. We will go ahead and create a custom cloud configuration that we know produces great looking sun shafts. Select the sky and fog volume and check that volumetric clouds are active. Set the cloud preset to custom. Set the density multiplier to 0.3. So that we have a cloudy sky but enough space between clouds for the sun to shine through. We will make a slight adjustment to our cloud curve and set the shape factor to 0.8 and set the shape scale to 5. Next set the lowest cloud altitude to 2000 and cloud thickness to 4000. Finally, check that shadows are enabled and that shadow distance is set to 60000. Keep in mind that no sun shafts will be rendered without shadows enabled. Let's change the angle of the sun so that the sun is clearly in our scene view and positioned at a level that will let us see the sun's rays beaming through the clouds. Set the vertical position, rotation in the x-axis to around 6. Then set the sun's horizontal position, y-axis, so you can clearly see the sun in the scene view. We are now ready to activate and set up our volumetric fog. Select the sky and fog volume and enable fog. You will notice that with the default setting you barely see any fog, never mind sun shafts. Let's start by setting our fog maximum height to 4000. This increases the maximum height of the fog in meters. Notice that we are now looking through fog. One thing to be aware of is higher values will create muddy looking skies, whereas lower values won't let us see the sun shafts. We have found values of around 4000 to 6000 work best for rendering sun shafts and maintain a nice clear sky. The second property we want to set is the fog attenuation distance. The fog attenuation distance represents how far you can see through the fog. Lower values represent thicker fog and higher values represent less thick fog. Next, let's adjust the max fog distance. The max fog distance should always be larger than the camera's far clipping plane. Set the value to 100,000. As you can see, the fog now renders to the horizon. Now activate the volumetric fog. You will notice that we still don't see sun shafts, but we are almost there. Set the volumetric fog distance to 100,000. Although this exceeds the camera's clipping plane, we found that this tends to look best in large open environments. You will now also see subtle sun shafts have appeared. To increase the intensity and look of your sun shafts, we have found adjusting three properties to be particularly effective. 
The ambient light probe dimmer and anisotropy are found in the fog override and the volumetrics multiplier in the lighting component of the Sun game object. Set the ambient light probe dimmer to 0.5 to reduce some of the ambient light from the fog. Next, set the anisotropy value to 0.5. Keep in mind that altering the value from 0 can affect performance. However, it is not necessary to change the value from 0 in order to achieve good looking sun rays. We have found that a value of 0.4 looks particularly good with our configuration. Finally, select the Sun game object and in the volumetrics dropdown set the multiplier to around 5. You can now clearly see strong sun shafts beaming between the clouds. That concludes part 3 of the volumetric cloud mastery series. You have learned how to set up your volumetric clouds, fog and lighting to render breathtaking sun shafts. At this point, I recommend playing with these properties to better understand how they work. With some practice, you can create infinite cloud variations and any cloudscape to suit your project's needs. If you have questions, please comment below or use the contact details you will find in the video's description. Stay tuned for a few quick time lapses where we set up a scene with volumetric clouds and sun shafts. Oh, 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 oh,
Mm-hmm.